Hello and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. <laughs> so So clean. Welcome to another Kyle Connor video. I'm Melissa, and you already know that guy. And we are currently on our way to go see something very exciting for me. And I can't wait to see it, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. My Audi e-tron is officially fully blacked out. Almost fully, but pretty close. Looks really good, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So we're on our way. We have absolutely no regen. It is pretty darn cold out right now. And we're at 27%. It did not want to regen. We got a little not. bit of regen down the on-ramp and then just said, oh, no, no regen for you. <laughs> so Colton is just wrapping up a few things and we're on our way to get the final reveal of what all he's done with the car. Yep. And uh, yeah, so seriously, you guys need a need to book up with him because he's booking up fast. So the funny thing with Colton is he's super meticulous, you know, like yeah, he we, can really do one or two cars a week. Maybe. Right. But we can't, like we even told him, don't, you don't really have to go too hard in yeah, the paint. Our, literally. Uh, John, we're just like, we just kind of want it to look nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, we, we pay, we pay Colton, you know, the full amount, but we're like, yeah, yeah it's us. Like, just don't worry about it. Make it, you know, as long as it looks all right. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm spending three weeks on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> but he did take a couple days off, which was really good. And yes. I was just like, please just take days off. Don't curse my name too much and don't curse this car too much. Right. Um, so he'll explain all the, the difficulties, I guess. New X7. That's that, the refresh one. That looks good. Yeah, really. Actually, I kind of like the split headlight thing. Uh, so we're in the Rivian, of course, heading to Clear Detailing to get the car. So go to cleardetailing.com, I think is his website. Yeah, and I think so. I mean, like, if or you, you can your, just message us and it, we can forward you to him. The things like if you're ordering a car now, like you should book the detail now because he's booked up months in advance. Months. Yeah. Thanks to you guys, honestly. Yeah, it's all, so. all thanks to our viewers for, yeah. for going there. So our prior, I always tell Colton, like we keep us priority last. So like whenever you have a space to squeeze in, because we have a never ending list of projects for him to work on. Right. We're like, take care of everyone else and we'll just go when it, when there's time. But I think you sped up your e-tron a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's been almost a month. It's been going in and out. For, it's been going in in stages, but now it's yeah. pretty much done. Yeah. So um, Colton will walk you through the whole state of the car. I think he has some before and after videos we'll include in here as well. And then, um, yeah, you'll see the full reveal. You haven't seen it blacked out. I have. You've only seen the grill. I've seen pictures, but I haven't okay. seen it in person. Yeah, so it's gonna look pretty damn good. Yeah. We have arrived here at Clear Detailing. My car is just beyond this door and I'm so excited to go in and see it and see all the other projects that he's doing. It's always really cool to see what Colton's up to. You don't like the door handles on this still? No, they're too close to my leg. Yeah. Alright, well, let's go see the e-tron. We got the 19-inch Model 3 wheels in the back here. Colton's Model 3. Here's his all-road. This thing is awesome. He's doing something. Yeah, I hear something going on. Did you text him, tell him we're gonna bother him? Yep. There he is. Hey friend. Hey, friend. How's it going? It is going. Wow. R1S lifestyle over here. Yeah. This is new, buffing on the back end of it. And uh, not built well. I can, I, you know, we looked at it the other day, but look at that rear cat <laughs> fitment. <laughs> yeah. Lots of stuff. Made a video on it, so that'll be going up soon. That'll be cool. You got the green Yeti to match the green Rivian. Yep, exactly. Are you ready to see your car? Yeah. Finally. <laughs> This is a long project. XC40 still dirty. Filthy. Yep, that starts <laughs> after this one. <laughs> nice. All right, well, let's go see the e-tron, shall we? Wow. So clean. This is a huge bother. I know. It's not like a huge, I mean, it's good. For this I time. polished it a little bit, so it does look a lot better. And it got coated as well, so it does look a little bit better, but... So you'll have to walk us through everything you did to it, but let's just take a quick look around. So black down here, black grill, black Audi badges, 
full paint correction all around. The um, paint protection film, we shot a video with this car about should you PPF a car, should you not? Um, this is not how I would have done it from the start. This is just how the previous owner had the car done, I guess, or how Audi did it. And um, yep, but we'll go through all of that. I think we need to get different window tints on it. So. Yeah, it's a little too uh, much for me. Yeah, too dark, I agree. It is pretty dark. Yeah. It is pretty dark. Too dark. Um, we'll probably keep the back glass dark, though. Like that. Look at that black Audi badge in the back. Yeah, no more uh, ring around there. This piece is really difficult to wrap, so I'm thinking we take that off and paint it. Yeah, I mean, I bet a pro wrapper could probably do that with ease, and they'd be like, oh yeah, this is simple, but for me, it's like... Ugh, yeah, but you did wrapping. all of this wrapping. You'll have to walk us through every little bit that you did because that's all done in wrap. These were not wrapped. We bought the black badges. And uh, wow, looks so freaking good like this. Just a night and day transformation. We're also going to have the wheels color changed to black if you're interested in that. Maybe. You don't know. We don't have to. It's up to you. We had, yeah, the roof bars wrapped black. Everything's just gone full murdered out. Right, interior was fully cleaned. How was that for you? Uh, the interior wasn't horrible. Okay, was, that's good. Uh, it just needed some love. But yeah, I mean, for having dogs in here, you guys really didn't do horrible with it. Quite surprised. I honestly think it goes a lot to the covers. Because whenever the dogs are in here, yes. I always have the seats down. Looks brand new, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Actually, it looks probably better than when we got it at the dealership just a few I months ago. Well, yeah, the impression Yeah. Yeah, I got most of those out. Those what do you are, think those were? It's just, it can be food. I mean, you name it. It gets in there, and like perforated seats are always super tricky to deal with. So you kind of have to get in there and clean it with toothpicks. And it's just <laughs> a nightmare. Wild. Super cool. Well, uh, Colton, why don't we go on a full tour of the car, front to back, sort of talk us through the sure. entire detail process. And um, for those of you who are not subscribed to Out of Spec Detailing, you should, because that's where we went through sort of paint protection film or not, a little bit of the decisions we made on this particular car and why. So yeah, let's do that here in just a second, but I gotta grab one of those prime drink things because these are freaking awesome. I don't think any cold what? Chili, there's some down low, I know. You got to restock your fridge here. I, I just got some more Celsius too. Prime. Here we go. Red. That's what I like. Nice. Stuff is amazing. Hey, Colton. So can you walk me through sort of step by step the week's worth of work that you did on yeah. this car? Because this wasn't just a one week project. You've, this has really been quite the in-depth situation. Yeah, it kind of got shelved after we did a few things. So I had to get a few cars in and out. First thing we did was grill. That was just a massive project. That was two days just doing the grill. And what was that like? So if you, if our previous viewers on this channel, maybe current viewers watched a previous video is what I'm trying to say. If they saw we had the silver and the black grill uh, sort of side by side, couple little clips, the amount of clips in the back and attachment points were insane. So how did you even remove this? Yeah, so what's really crazy with Audis, and this is where you start getting into their build quality, if you will, is everything has clips on clips on clips and just like the most amount of screws. So this whole um, side fender arch actually had to come off. So this piece right here had to be removed yeah, exactly. to remove this piece. Exactly. How does that make any sense? Well, because there's some big bolts here holding it on. Actually, what's crazy is I think the front bumper maybe has 15 total bolts holding it on. Wow. And then there's all sorts of clips in the back. Now, what I wasn't expecting is once I got that off, the grill had probably 80 screws and clips, if not <laughs> even more. It's like I pulled this thing off and we had to take everything off the back side of the bumper to get to the grill and then all the clips to drop it out the front. And what's really weird um, is the camera here. So 
on these, they all come different, right? So this was a this was a gray one. But when I got the grill out and I went to put the camera in, it didn't fit. And I go, what the heck? So I went and looked at the old grill. We actually have it upstairs, but there's this notched out piece that is definitely not manufactured that way. It's like Audi goes in, takes a little Dremel and cuts it out. So I had to do the same thing. That was a whole nother process of doing that. And then getting the emblems on, had to break all the old clips off because they were just so tight in there, but we got it on there. After we got the grill done, started on the actual detailing process. Is that before you reinstalled the bumper? No, bumper went back on. Um, I actually did wrap the bottom side of this while the bumper was off. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's, it kind of went in these weird stages and that was a little tricky to figure out, okay, what needs to go? And since we're up here, I just wanted to also mention, we did not order the black parking sensors. Yeah. And we only noticed like at the end. <laughs> yeah. So you had the vinyl cut. This is just a piece of vinyl over the gray parking sensor. Yeah. And it looks great and it functions as designed. Yeah, exactly. What's really cool what I did with this, instead of hand cutting it out, I've got a Cricut machine, which is basically a plotter for cutting. You guys have maybe seen them for small arts and crafts stuff or doing stickers. So I measured it 15.5 millimeters, 0.61 inches, put it into the program, cut them out perfectly, put them on there with tweezers, looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, it looks factory fresh for sure. And then, you know, some of our viewers who were thinking about doing this to their e-tron were really curious, how did you pull the grill out? Because the radar is behind here. This is a heated piece for the radar. How did you remove this without getting error codes or issues on the car at all? Yeah, so the big thing with that, so I talked with our local Audi dealership, Ed Carroll, and they said, you can do one of two things. You can disconnect the battery, or you can not turn on the ignition. I don't really like disconnecting batteries on EVs just because there's a lot of stuff going on. And I didn't want this to become a big paperweight in my shop, not being able to move it around. So what I did was we got the wheels off, put it in jack mode, obviously to take the wheels off, didn't touch the ignition and went for it. Now, if you guys do want the grill done at a local Audi dealership, they're gonna one, charge you labor to replace it, to charge you labor to actually reprogram all the sensors because that's how Audi says you should do it by the books. So far, we haven't had any issues. Yeah, so far all of the driver assistance systems work as designed. I mean, we do have the studded Nokian Hakapalita 10 EV tires that are so soft that it actually triggers ESP yeah. <laughs> going around corners yeah. on lane assist. But other than that, um, the grill works great. So I think that was the way to do it, which is pretty much take the car uh, and just shut it off and do the grill swap and then put it back in, plug everything in, the car has no idea it's any different. Yep. And I think, you know, we definitely took a risk. We're like, oh, maybe it won't work. Worst case, we'll just bring it to the dealer anyway. And they'll, and and they'll, they'll do the thing they were gonna do in the first place. So I think we, that was a risk we took and I think it was the right one. Um, just, yeah, don't wake up any of the sensors when yeah. everything's unplugged. And it makes just a massive difference at the, the aesthetics of the car too. Um, I would definitely say if you guys are DIY doing the grill, Take your time. It was a lot of work. Plan for an extended period of time and just be patient. Not, I didn't break a single clip, didn't have any leftover screws. Like, <laughs> okay, that's the best car project ever. That's yeah. really <laughs> impressive that you didn't break a single clip. And there's clips like every five millimeters on this thing. Oh, it's it's insane. insane. It's absolutely insane. Actually, I say that we did have to break all the clips out of the old um, emblem, but that's not getting reused. Right, that'll go in the trash. Yep, exactly. Or on someone's wall. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> so I will say just visually looking at this car, um, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, but just to start, there's two things left to do until it's totally perfect, in my opinion. The first is the tint. This is the tint that I guess the previous owner did on the car. Again, we are the second owner of this vehicle. We bought it certified from an Audi dealer in Connecticut. And um, we're actually going to have the windshield tinted to an 80% ceramic Expel uh xr i guess is what we use on the everything good stuff. the good stuff <laughs> and then i think we're going to remove this i think this is 20 percent tint yeah. and we're going to go up to a 30 percent ceramic just to lighten it a little bit it's a little bit too dark um so that's step one and we can do that later this week step two is we're actually going to get these probably painted in a black uh or if Alyssa decides to keep them gray we'll at least have probably martian wheels going on 
for summertime. For summertime. And we're going to go for some big boy Martians, which will look great. Then we can get the little air module so we can slam the suspension on this thing. Yep. So we'll have roof box all blacked out, wait, wait, big wait. Martians so and slam. Yeah, we're going to make it look awesome. Oh, okay. yep. Even cooler than it does. That's right. I, I think it looks amazing. I don't mind these wheels. I think they still look nice. I really like the design. I think Kyle and I have talked about it. No, Alyssa and I much, but mm -hmm. these all black would look just stunning. Yeah, I totally agree. I think if we go, maybe we decide to keep the gray inlays and go black on the face. You definitely could do that. That, that could be interesting. I don't know, but... We have some options anyway. So what else did you do after the full front end situation? Because again, this whole car had, you know, polished aluminum or just silver trim everywhere. Brushed aluminum, I should say. Yeah, brushed aluminum. So we have that on the roof rails down here all around um, the kind of mirrors, everything like that. Down here, we didn't do this because like we said, this piece, if you look under here, so it starts here, it goes all the way down here. And then all of these louvers in here, I'm not sure I could physically wrap that. That would just be insane. But as far as the detailing process, what we did on this full paint correction, full polish, pulled all of the emblems off. So everything in here is actually polished super nice, gloss black here. I think this is just stand out so, so much. Right. So what's funny is that we really went down to the nitty gritty of detail on this project yeah. where the old e-tron badge had a silver face in it without the orange surround however these had an orange surround but a silver e-tron face right. and we replaced these with the black e-tron yeah. in the center just to really give it that look now I think what would be kind of cool is to paint the calipers in this color, which is actually a factory option. Yes. And so that would kind of give it that first edition look, if you will. Um, I don't know, Alyssa, what would you think about that? I don't know. I'm, I'm the type of person, I don't want my car to look fake. I don't want my, like, I don't want hmm. people to see, like, look at it and say, oh yeah, she did a lot to that. I want it to be but it, that would be factory orderable. So it's yeah. how it could come, you know, OE orange, we would spec yeah, the caliber. Yeah, basically that same exact orange. I think it, was it on the year one edition? And then now I think Kronos edition? Yeah, the Kronos edition yeah. gets it on the new ones. Yeah. They also get the really nice 22s, I think. Yeah. The 22 arrow wheels look so good on yeah, this. Totally agree. And uh, maybe as we talked about the Etron S wider arches would look amazing. Yeah, so that was a thought. We actually went to the Audi dealer and we looked at maybe ordering an e-tron S. This is before the Q8 was announced. Yeah. And they make just a little bit of a wide fender situation. And I think that's all they change are these little panels on the side. Yeah, these pop out. Yep. I say it's easy, but like they're pretty tricky to do. Once you get them going, they're pretty straightforward, but yeah, you can basically put the Etron S ones on here from what I understand. Right, and I'm thinking if we're gonna go for some big boy Martians for summertime, we might want as much poke as we can get, um, you know, before we start going outside the fender, which would mean, yeah, maybe we just wanna put the factory wide body. As long as I have another party drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just drive it. all well above my head. Yeah. But e -tron S just looks perfect from the back with that little good. lip. And But it's not worth spending the money because you like your car extremely comfortable. Mm -hmm. And the Q8 for our needs isn't enough of a bump, which is why we're yeah. keeping this. I mean, it certainly has a lot of range, but the range isn't really ever an issue for you, is it, Alyssa? Uh, at the moment, no. I'm, just, I'm a very bubbly, just a bubble person, so I just stay in my bubbles and go for it. You just drive around town. <laughs> just drive yeah. around town, go into the mountains here or there, but... Uh, it's easy to charge and we've, I'm comfortable taking it across country if I needed to because we've already done that before. It's just, I don't need anything more in my brain, um, but you know, minds change. So Yeah, well, I mean, at least for another year, I think it would look good to have a little lip. Yeah. So talk, talk to me a little bit about the paint because it just looks insane. I mean, it looks like a whole shade darker in my opinion. Oh yeah, I, I think I sent you a few videos and it's just the clarity that came out of the paint because you just have water spots, you know, like all the tree sap. This car had sat outside for, since I think you guys owned it, right? Yep. Rarely in the garage. So pretty weather beat on everything. And But what I told you this morning on the phone, I was like, you know, it makes a huge difference. Nice doing new cars like the R1S, but when you take an old car and make it look like this, it's pretty awesome. So this did a very, very, very extensive paint correction 
lots of polishing on it. And then this actually got a brand new coating, which I just have switched to, um, which is Gion certified coating. So this Do you is, have a, 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 can we see a bottle? Yeah, I definitely can. So this is Infinite Base Type 1. So this is a five-year warranted coating. I just got accepted into this program, super excited about it. This allows me to have warranted coatings be a certified detailer instead of using all of the kind of consumer grade stuff that you guys can go on and purchase yourself. Don't really recommend doing your own coatings unless you know what you're doing because you can get into some trouble. Yeah. But this stuff so far is really awesome. But do you find it's just as easy to install or it requires a little bit extra touch? So this was a huge test because when you get non-metallic black soft paint, a lot of issues, and this is why I've switched to this stuff, is I was getting paint swelling. So essentially what it does is the carriers and the ceramic coatings, how it puts it on there, all the solvents. I'm not a scientist. This is what I'm told. That it causes the paint to physically swell. You get these huge streaks in it. And with Gion stuff, I have not had that at all. This stuff really goes on pretty easy. Um, and I mean, the results speak for themselves. Yeah, it looks amazing. It's had, a, what, three days now to cure in here? Yeah. Something like that? Yep, and there's a little bit different cure times on these. This is a one layer, five year coating, which I really like. Um, what's kind of funny is the consumer grade stuff is a two layer application that goes up to four years. So you're getting, uh, you know, more durability with, you know, less time installing. But sure. it is kind of tricky if you don't know what you're doing, per se. Of course, yeah. Um, so paint was gone through. Are there any, obviously there's going to be some spots on the paint that can't come back to perfect. Yep. Just because of, you know, this car being four years old now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got 24,000 miles on it. It was never intended to be a concourse car. So no one, including us, have really taken care of it yep. uh, as well as we should and, and will do. Um, but what do we what do we have in terms of scratches left? I haven't seen much except for the bumper situation. Yeah, that here was probably the worst. I'll try and get out of here so you can actually see it. But I believe those are probably from the doggos. That's uh, from Boopy. Yeah, the, these streaks right here, mm -hmm. just some impressions. Yeah, those dog's nails are hard on paint. And especially something as soft as this. I had talked to you about when I was doing the paint correction, like really grinding after every single little scratch. Not a great game plan because we want to leave as much paint on here as possible. Uh, but also make it look as good as possible. I would say I got between like 95 plus percent of the scratches out and there were a lot. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. So we'll of course insert some before and afters in here that you shot and sent to us and it just looks absolutely awesome. So really the next steps for the car are, I think we're gonna have this painted, um, then tint and, oh, we didn't even talk about the roof rails. You did the roof rails. Oh yeah. Yeah, we did those. They did not come like that. Yeah. These two were really tricky to wrap. So this is actually one piece, believe it or not. That really? goes from back here all the way around into here and stretching, shrinking, all of that. Just wow. crazy hard to do. These probably took, I want to say an hour and a half uh, just to do one side. I'm not a, <laughs> I am not a pro vinyl wrapper. I yeah. think, you Don't know, go to you for wrapping no, stuff. My skills are getting there, but not professionally. Well, getting there, but just take a look at this in here. Like you can barely tell, actually I can't even tell at all that any of this would just be vinyl. It just looks like straight paint. You cannot see the edges really. It's an insane job. Yeah. And this is KPMF Perfect Black. And you said when you came here, like, I can't believe like how good the color looks. There's a little texture here and there, and I think that's the biggest way you can tell it's a wrap, but I think overall it looks pretty darn good. These were quite tricky as well. Um, these were kind of a brushed aluminum silver look before, and Kyle goes, can you wrap those? I'm like, okay. I mean, while we're at it, let's try it. So <laughs> what I actually ended up doing was taking the whole base of these off, separating the bar. These all pop off, the rubber pops out, wrapped everything, and then reassembled it so that you can get all these edges tucked under here. Just looks incredible. Pretty insane. And then um, I know you did some plastic coatings as well. Not yep. that this car has much plastic on no. it at all, which is nice. I mean, that's the Audi thing. It's paint everywhere. Yeah, I mean, compared to the Rivian over there where like the whole bottom, you know, is complete plastic. But yes. 
Here on the mirrors, they got it in the cowl. So this has a bunch of UV protection on it, which really helps um, plastics. You know, even on Rivians, when they come in right away, I always ceramic coat those because they're so dull. Once you get all of that looking good, it just, and it stays nice. That's the biggest and thing. What product do you use on this? Is that the same as the paint? No, so those are actually completely different coatings. This is still from G-Technic, which was the company I was using before for paint coatings, um, but it's G-Technic C4 Permanent Trim Restore. Okay. I hate the word permanent because it's a two-year coating. Okay. It should not be named that, but nonetheless, <laughs> it works well and it doesn't streak, it doesn't make it too glossy, it just looks super nice. Now, the one thing on this car is there's still paint protection film, and the only way you can really tell is from this line right here. And I'm not a fan of half hoods, quarter hoods. I, you know, we, we had a whole video on this. I'm like, if you're going to PPF a car, PPF every panel. But again, we bought the car this way. So my thought process was this thing's going to go up and down I-25. It's going to get smashed with rocks. It's an Audi, so you have to tailgate people. And so I was like, well, let's just leave the PPF on. Yep. If it looks like crap after, you know, it's definitely going to look like crap in a year or two. We know that for sure. Then we can always remove it and then just polish the paint and ceramic coat it. Yep, you definitely can do that. Uh, I work really hard and this is always tricky when you're doing paint corrections and polishing is cleaning these edges out because naturally they just get filled with compound and there's always dirt and grime on this really and tricky to do. when hand washing you always want to go in yeah, this exactly. direction if you're going this way you're going to maybe pop an edge and then you just get into all this you know craziness but the whole front bumper is done this is all coated with the same um, stuff that's on the paint and should stay looking pretty good. I did polish this out too. Uh, you did polish the, the yep. PPF, interesting. Yep, yeah, you can do that. Um, this to me does not seem like it's a self-healing PPF whatsoever. Ooh, Trying I to apply agree. some heat, scratches stayed in there. So, yeah. Um, polishing it brought a lot of clarity back on it. Yeah, massive. The, you know, trees, stuff and bugs and everything. There are some bug stains in here that that I just won't ever come out. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's to be expected. It's not a concourse car. It's there yeah. just for protection. And the good news is the bug stains are on the PPF and not on the paint. Right. Yeah, definitely. Which you could polish those out from paint. But yes. whole another video topic. The grill also fully got ceramic coated as well. Oh, so interesting. stay looking quite a bit. How, how was it? ceramic coating all of these individual little slots. Yep. <laughs> it's always fun. It's always tricky to do, but you know, that's why we do it. Great. And I assume the roof had the same treatment. Yep. How do you even polish roofs? Like, how do you get up to it? You got a ladder? Uh, step stools and yeah, it's a lot of work. A lot yeah. of shoulder and arm strain, but yeah, the wow. roof on this was beat too. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's an area, especially on a car like this, that never really gets maintained. Like the hood is always one of those things that people always gravitate towards. Okay. Got to get the hood clean. Cause that's really what you see. But like the roof was another story. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I can't thank you enough for doing all the work on this car. It just looks insane. I really don't mind the silver wheels, to be honest. Now, I think it kind of sets it apart a little bit. I think we'll know a lot more about what it looks when we get that light tint on the windshield, lighter tints on the side. I think we'll look really nice. But overall, your thoughts, Alyssa, on the full car and project? Just absolutely incredible. More than pleased. Very excited to drive her around. <laughs> Um, get my massaging seats going again. I've missed her. Oh, um, we didn't even talk about the interior, Colton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't just do the outside. <laughs> this went through the full interior treatment as well. Um, I'm pretty blown away with how it came out, to be honest. I, Alyssa and I were texting one day, and she goes, the interior shouldn't be this bad. And I sent her a picture, and she goes, Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. And it was of the armrest here that was covered in what I would assume was blue or Ellie stepping on this grimy. Yep. The seats just had everything kind of nasty on it, but got it all cleaned out. Yeah. Justin saying, you know, this seat got covered in whiskey. Yep. Uh, from an accident, not a car accident, but a whiskey accident. A bottle exploded due to heat uh, is our understanding. Right, Alyssa? It's already back. Um, yeah, dog yeah. hair. You sat in it once and it's All already All I had to do is the back of my leg. Yeah, <laughs> yep. so it's, it's inevitable. But yeah, they're 
don't leave whiskey glass bottles inside of cars. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it was such thick glass, I didn't think it would do anything. Yep, but the steering wheel got a nice clean. Everything looks nice. Take a look into the back seat here. Super duper new and fresh feeling. All the screens, that's always the, the most impressive part to me when you get into an Audi that's clean with screens. You yeah. know in five minutes they'll be destroyed. Oh, yeah, it's two seconds. Yes. It's literally <laughs> Filled with dust, fingerprints, yep. you name it. It's so. the worst, yeah. really the worst. But man, the leather feels good. So what, um, now we had spoken where you weren't going to do any leather conditioning because right. there's already paint on the leather. And, you know, if you stay on top of it, it maybe isn't so needed. So what did you do to the interior in terms of cleaning process? Yeah, so when you talk about paint, I'm sure somebody's going to go, what the heck is he talking about? So modern leather on interiors has essentially a clear coat over them just like everything else does to protect the natural leather in there as you and i have talked about leather is really not the greatest interior solution it's honestly the worst interior solution. i would agree you know stuff like the rivian with vegan leather which is essentially all it means it's vinyl it's synthetic and i think it wears a lot better um, the biggest thing that happens with leather is you are clogging all those pores of the clear coat in there and it just really starts to look shiny. It holds dirt. It feels like just really gross. What happens and what I find is when you start conditioning stuff is that it just accelerates that, right? So now you're grabbing stuff and putting it in there and it's clogging all those pores instead of cleaning it often and letting those pores be exposed. You're basically masking everything. Now there are coatings that I've used and we've got a video that we did on an Ocean Coast R1T um, that are flexible coatings that I think that's probably a better option to use than conditioning. I find conditioning adds a lot of sheen to it. My opinion, interior should not be shiny whatsoever. Totally agree. Besides your screens. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so you just went through and did a deep clean more or less. Yep. And then we'll have uh, what leather product should we use to just wipe down, maintenance cleaning, when something pops up, what, what product should we go for? So I've been really liking PMS um, Express Interior Cleaner, and that's made for all leather, all plastics, pretty much everything, your dash. It um, just goes in there and cleans everything super nice. It doesn't leave any residue behind. So if you just kind of often, you know, the dogs hop in here, if you've got a spray bottle, hit some microfiber, wipe it down, good to go. Great, well, that'll be the plan. You think you can stay on top of that? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You might, the car might be back here for maintenance washes every, every three days. Um, yeah, cool. Well, it all looks pretty freaking awesome to me. We got the, uh, what's the name of this company in here? Canvas back. We got the canvas back. And these cleaned up quite well. Um, I don't know if you noticed how many stains are all over that, but this is really nice how these clean. So they say actually you're supposed to just use warm water and kind of dish soap to clean that instead of like putting in a bunch of extra cleaners. And this stuff cleans up so nice. Yeah, I've got these in my cars too, and I really, really like them. Big fan. Canvas back should sponsor us. They won't. They won't. <laughs> They're too scared. <laughs> Pony up, canvas back. All right, cool. Well, uh, what do you say we roll? We got to head to EA, got to charge up the Rivian. But uh, there you go. Your new Audi feels like a new car delivery. I know. I can't wait to see this thing outside too. All right, well, let's pull it out and get some shots of it out there. Sounds good. Hear those Nokians. Yes. A little snow in the air, too. The ski truck. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Thing looks incredible. <laughs> I always love the outside, especially with this overcast lighting. It just looks like a mirror. That is insane. Literally, looking down here on the side, it's like just a full mirror. Look, I'll bring the phone up to it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. <laughs> so cool. That's sick. Looks super good going down the road. We're just heading over to Electrify America to charge up the cars and uh, yeah, rolling up with three cars. That's a good thing to do for station fullness. Here comes the e-tron. There we go, looking great. 
super nice. Man, that thing does just look pretty awesome. I think that back panel, we definitely need to wrap black or get painted black and then she'll be completely done. One last item to do. Etron still looks really good. We just gave it a wash, but we didn't use any soap per uh, Colton's suggestions just because I think the coating is still adhering or whatever, all that jazz. Yeah, it's a week until we can use real soap, so we just sprayed it off, but actually the paint's really uh, statically charged. Right, yeah, he said that's why your car is going to look a bit more dirty than it usually does. I'm like, well, it's a black car and it's Colorado, it's going to look dirty. Um, yeah, we literally just washed it and you can already see the, the bits of dirt, but I think that honestly is the static that he was talking about, but on it, I am so pleased with this. I love this car. I already love this car a lot, but now I just love it a little tad bit more. Um, and I just think Colin did an amazing job. It looks great. I miss driving it and the comfort of it. It's just so quiet going down a highway. We are, instead of like using the dryer thing, we just ripped up and down the highway. And I think we were going uh, pr pretty darn fast. <laughs> yeah, like 120, yeah. Th allegedly. Just a, yeah, allegedly. which is the maximum the tires can actually go to right. because we have the studded tires. So we went to the maximum of the tire just to make sure that and it was safe. Nothing. Yeah, it was and so it silent. It feels like everybody else is just driving slow. Like there was no, I don't know, it's, it's such an odd, crazy experience. But totally love this car. Love how it's turned out. The only thing left is to wrap this bumper. We're either going to wrap it or we're going to paint it. Um, right, that'll be a project done. for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, you yeah. can see everything is just already sticking to the paint. But yeah. underneath, if you look at these sun lines right here, you'll just see no swirls, no scratches. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally insane how perfect the paint is. The black badges really yeah. transform the look over here. I love the black Audi badge. I love that we went with those in black and orange as well. It definitely made a huge difference. But those are so darn expensive. Yeah, Audi, that is ridiculous. I think they're like almost $100 a piece. Yes. Ridiculous. <laughs> but I guess worth it. Yeah, uh, I only, think worth it. The only thing, the other thing that we're going to do is probably what? Powder coat? Is that the Yeah, correct? powder coat or paint. The wheels have to go black. No question. I mean, it just well, looks better. You know, actually, I'm not 100% sure on that. I think it still looks good the way it is. But leave your comments down below and uh, we'll, we'll go back and forth to see what you guys want to see. Yeah, I think, I think we go full black orange calipers like the Kronos edition. One of our viewers commented with a photo of his car, yeah. which is the new Kronos, which is all blacked out just like this. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit different wheel, but has the orange calipers. So I think you just go for that look. Looks like the modern spec package. It's How OE. More is that than what this car actually was? They're the same price. They're the same. Then why didn't we just go with that? Because we bought this used. We bought it used for the same price as something new. No, no, new. They're a hundred grand almost. Oh, okay. This thing was almost a hundred grand new. We paid seventy for this, so we saved thirty thousand dollars. And we it only had what fifteen thousand miles on that's, it. Something when we a, bought it. That's a Judy workshop day. <laughs> right. That's one service visit for the Range Rover. <laughs> so maybe we should have bought a new one. I don't know. I think still we should consider the Q8 Etron S There's as the next like, car. Little differences that I'm not sure that I would want. My main thing is the range which yeah. is really not a problem for me right now but in the winter it's the really winter, bad it's pretty bad and i got my ski pass and <laughs> i don't know if she's gonna make it all the way to vale or to breckenridge on one charge which i highly doubt it so that's gonna be interesting but she charges so well it is so comfortable to sit in the car it's, it's really it's not a gripe to just have to sit there for two honestly minutes. you'd have to charge to get there and back anyway it's right. maybe an extra few minutes of charging in this versus a brand new one i don't yeah. think it's worth the money i think it's nice that we made this one look pretty good it'll be good for the next few years maybe we'll pick up a used e-tron s a q8 version like we did with this one a few years down the line what is that like a little spicier in the corner yeah it's three motor 500 something horsepower i think but it's only like a 30 mile difference isn't it? No, they have quite a bit more range. Another hundred miles almost. Oh. <laughs> that is a huge consideration. Yeah. But if it doesn't have these seats and these massaging seats, you can, I don't want it. Yeah, you can get massaging seats in the e-tron S now and night vision, which I think would be really nice to have around here yeah. uh, when we in, go up in the in mountains. Due time, but I'm 
seriously so pleased with this car. I, I don't want to trade it in anytime soon. Right. The next big purchase will be the Taycan. So let's get that first. Yeah. <laughs> if we ever get an allocation for that. Here. Right. Well, we're waiting for facelift at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. The e-tron's done. Looks freaking awesome. Definitely, I think, gave it a little bit more spice to carry it, make it look a bit more modern over the next couple of years. Again, wheels will go, that will go, and I think we should paint the calipers orange like the Kronos edition just to match the e-tron orange here on the side. Then we'll get the little air suspension module and Martian wheels and slam it for the summertime and lay some pack. And I think this thing will just look so sick sitting on the ground. And then of course, when you drive it, you just air it back up. And uh, yeah, I think that'll be great. So a couple more videos to do on this. We should do some ownership updates, costs of things. It's still asking for an oil change. I think that'll make a good episode. So more to come, but uh, I would say stage one is complete. And I really think just blacking out the front of this transformed the entire look, made it look so much more modern. And a huge thank you to Colton for literally spending weeks on this project. Clear detailing. Yeah, Shout clear out. detailing. He's got a long wait list. Yeah, he's booking out, guys, so you better get in there. Yeah, I think you're like in February or March at this point right. if you want to even get your car looked at by him. So, all right, and the interior is great. It's cold. Let's go. Off we go back to home.